Each year, more than 350 million people will be infected with malaria. One million will die. Malaria is the cause of one death every 30 seconds in Africa alone. This disease, without mercy, targets children of all ages. Everyone is a potential victim. Not long ago, malaria was a worldwide scourge, but modern medicine has all but eliminated it in developed nations. While in the United States, where malaria is little more than a passing thought, here in sub-Saharan Africa, where 90% of malaria deaths occur, it is all too real. Parasite is a single-celled organism, or protozoan, too small to be seen by the naked eye. In nature, malaria parasites spread by infecting successively two types of host, human and mosquito. Sporozoites are injected into the human host when the infected female Anopheles mosquito takes a blood meal. Within 30 minutes, the sporozoites invade the human liver cells, or hepatocytes, where they produce thousands of merozoites within a week. Recent studies show that the parasite buds from the dead liver cells into mirosomes, thereby cloaking themselves from the human immune system. The mirosomes enter the bloodstream from the liver. The mirozoites are released from the mirosomes, where they invade and infect red blood cells. The growing parasite consumes and degrades intracellular proteins in the red blood cells, mainly hemoglobin. The parasite multiplies in the red blood cells to form new merozoites. This typically takes two days. These blood stages are responsible for the symptoms of malaria, including fevers, shivering, anemia, pain in the joints, headache, and severe vomiting. If left untreated, the disease may progress to severe anemia, convulsions, coma, and death. The infected red blood cells adhere to capillary walls deep within the vasculature, protecting them from the normal human immune responses. Infected blood cells burst, releasing merozoites which infect new cells. Some merozoites invade the red blood cells and develop into gametocytes, the sexual stages of the parasite. This process can take 10 to 12 days. The gametocytes are drawn into another mosquito when it takes a blood meal from an infected human host. While in the mosquito's stomach, the male and female gametocytes shed their red blood cell hosts and develop into gametes. The gametes fuse to form a zygote. After fertilization, the zygote elongates and becomes motile, forming the ookinete, which then invades the midgut wall of the mosquito and develops into an oocyst. The oocyst matures and divides, producing about 1,000 new sporozoites. After about five to seven days, the oocyst ruptures, releasing sporozoites into the body cavity of the mosquito. They migrate to the salivary glands, where they can survive for up to 59 days. Now ready to infect a Right, so there are roughly 300 to 500 million cases of malaria reported every year and it is true that Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, is disproportionately affected. Um, roughly 75% of all deaths in children un um, under five are in children in, that live in Sub-Saharan Africa and it's also about 90% of all of those cases um, of the 300 to 500 million are in Sub-Saharan Africa. Of all of the different causes of something that the public health field likes to call disability adjusted life years, malaria is one of the um, highest affected of disability adjusted life years, especially for a single causative um, infectious agent. So there are other problems including respiratory um, diseases and diarrheal diseases that cause a lot of disability adjusted life years um, lost. However, the, um, those are all caused by many different infectious agents. 
So as far as the percentage and uh, due to one infectious agent, malaria is, is very high up there, ranking right along up there with HIV, um, the HIV virus. Um, secondly, ways, other ways people are affected, um, students actually, young, young children, get anemia and suffer greater malnutrition because of malaria parasites. Also, they miss school and have lower cognitive ability and, and lower performance in school due to malaria parasites. So it is a large problem. Also, people miss work as they have to um, travel to the health posts in order to get treatment. So it is a large problem. of reasons for that and it may be specific to various countries in Africa but by and large there is less access to common health care um, health posts in many parts of rural Africa most of these deaths are occurring in rural areas and the second uh, second reason is people don't necessarily recognize their symptoms as being caused by an infectious pathogen um, some people may think that they have another disease that was caused by another agent or something maybe even a superstitious um, type of disease and for that reason the people don't stop what they're doing and go and seek appropriate care from um, a health post that has microscopy and other diagnostic tools available so people don't always recognize their illness as being caused by an infectious pathogen um, that can be cured with antimalarial drugs. However, a normally devastating genetic disease has provided hope to some. While regular red blood cells are openly susceptible to the malaria parasite, the unique shape of sickled cells prevent malaria from attaching. This effect occurs in the heterozygous manifestation of sickle cell anemia, when one regular and one sickle cell allele are present for the gene. This version is not severe enough to be fatal, but contains enough sickle cells to prevent infestation by the malaria parasite. While well, sickle cell has prevented the dreadful effects of malaria for some, there are still a large number hard or killed by the disease every year. But with the recent advances in medical technology, the future is bright.